Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. Uh, you've been with AVG for seven years now? Six. Six years, all right. Uh, so what, what's it been like? Six years is a long time. I mean, in today's times, people, by the time two years, three years into their first job out of campus, they get jittery. Am I being paid enough? What are my batchmates doing on Instagram? They seem to be having a lot of fun and going to fancy places and you want to move on and you want to do a lot of things that every other batchmate is doing. So six years is a long time. So what's it been like? So it's been a great journey. Thankfully, uh, I got bored and that's probably the biggest complaint all my managers have with me, that I get bored with a role within one year. Thanks to being in ABG, in six years I have done five roles, three businesses, so it didn't really seem like one single job. It might just be ABG, but I worked across Birla Carbon, Aditya Birla Retail, and very recently I'm working with Pantaloons. So that addresses the question on will I get bored, etc. On comparison, um, I went to IM with WorkEx, and not as a fresher, and when I went in, I pretty much knew that there are going to be people with different backgrounds, with people wanting to do different things with their life in terms of careers, in terms of studies, etc. So, um, I pretty much stopped comparing myself, right, getting into IM, right? Like, I mean, I have a lot of friends who, are, who might be earning like twice my salary, but living out of airports, and I didn't want to do that. So it's up to me as to what I wanted to choose for my career and I think it's each one's choice. So I don't really feel bad about where I am. So I, I really feel happy. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories with you. Uh, 8th November, uh, demonetization hits and you were at uh, Aditya Billa Retail at yeah, that time. And uh, were you at a Moore store? I was at a Moore. Uh, uh, so for a store, cash sales is the most important yeah. thing. and. Suddenly, demonetization hits you. Uh, what was that like? What was that experience like? So it was uh, a very unexpected experience. Obviously, no one expected that within... Uh, no B-School prepares you for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no one prepares you for this B-School or no B-School. Doesn't matter. Like 80% of the country's cash is no more valid. But you still have to meet your sales numbers. There are going to be tons of people flowing into your stores. Because I, I believe this was an announced around 7.38 p.m. and the currency was going to go uh, out of circulation after midnight, right? So first things first, get your stores to remain open throughout the night so that people can come in, use their old currency, start shopping, pick up their supplies for the next three months. Okay, this month will be sale, the next two months will be sale. We will see something else for that. Right? The next thing is modern trade is going to be filled with customers because general trade... Sorry, you'll have to, I'm sorry to interrupt. You'll have to explain what is modern okay, trade. Okay, sorry. Modern trade is basically all of these... Uh, Stores which are run by, say, a future group, Aditya Birla retail, large format retail, essentially. Large, small, all of okay. it. General trade is basically your Kirana wala, your Pan wali, Tapri, all of that. Right? So that is called general trade. So obviously, those guys only take cash most of the time, and uh, hence, modern trade is going to have a huge, huge, huge influx of customers. So, how do you ensure your shelves are not empty? So, huge challenges, but you had to basically work through the night, work through the next two or three weeks to ensure your customers are happy. Because they're going to walk into your store. If they don't get that 5 kg Ashirwa data from your store, he's going to go to a neighboring store and buy that. He's not going to come two days later saying, Ab shayad more mein aage hoga, ab main lunga, tab tak main chawal do din, right? That's not going to happen. So, this, this was obviously a huge uh, um, challenge for us, but it also taught you a lot in terms of thinking on your feet. It taught us a lot in terms of making how you can ensure your customer is at the top of all your decision making. Some of these decisions could also be wrong in terms of what you have taken because you don't have too much of a window to decide. But you have to live with it, play with it. If you take 10 decisions, only 3 might work and 7 might not. But you still have to take that decision. And that's, that's the biggest difference that, is, that differentiates an OK leader from a good leader, right? And demon was one thing, okay? The GST happened the year after that. Right. What was that like? <laughs> yeah. So thankfully, I can say you, all this. Who did you vote for finally? <laughs> so I am on camera, man. Like I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> but uh, so GST was thankfully something that was pre-planned. It still was a little bit crazy because your taxation and your billing systems had to change in the store overnight after tw after twelve. 
uh, midnight on 30th of June from 1st of July, the tax for the same product like a Cadbury chocolate becomes 18% from a 28%. So you, are, you have to charge the customer correctly, your POs have to go out correctly. But that was obviously pre-planned. So I mean, thanks to the government, we had a lot of challenges in our role. Like, I, and I hope that's not going to happen for the next five years. <laughs> when my oak gets out of campus, enters, I am, uh, enters ABG yeah. uh, six years ago. Yeah. The person she was then and the person she is today, as a professional, three, four things that have changed drastically from campus till today. Yeah, so I think I have grown tremendously professionally thanks to ABG and obviously um, all the hard work that I've had to also put in from my side plus all the mentors I've had. Right? So few things that, I, that are top of my mind which I think today are different from what I was when I graduated six years ago. Uh, ABG gives you a flavor of all kinds of businesses, right? Be it from a B2C business or B2B business. So I, I worked in Carbon Black. When I joined Carbon Black, for example, I had a dotted line reporting from three different zones like Europe, North America, and uh, Africa. You were based out of Atlanta at that time, is it? I was in Atlanta for six months, okay. after which I moved to India. So, um, you see, I, don't, I didn't even know Carbon Black, what it even is. What when, is it? <laughs> So anything that is actually artificial and man-made has this chemical called carbon black. So be it, so obviously the entire auto industry has carbon black because of the tires and the windshield, even the chair you're sitting on, the pen that you use, the lead in your pencil, everything has carbon black. So it's, it's so ubiquitous in your life, but you don't even know what it is till you join that role. So it's pretty crazy. And I had these guys reporting to me who have worked for 18, 19 years in plants, know everything about it, and I was supposed to be their manager. So you can imagine what that was like. These guys are like at least 40, 45 years old. I'm like some 27-year-old kid who has come out of campus. So I think ABG gave me these kind of opportunities throughout my career. And the first thing I learned was to accept that you don't know this, OK? It's OK to not know. There is a different expertise that you bring to the table, which is why you're there. If you try to be like, ah, sab kuch aata hai. Main, you know, I'm here because I'm out of IMA and that's the best place to be and I'm the smartest person here, that's not going to work. Be modest, be humble, ask questions, learn. Easiest, and that, that's true for like, even in B school. This is all hind hindsight advice. I wish I had it when I was in campus. But now I feel that in six years, that has definitely grown. The second thing is to be able to think on your feet because, um, see, I was very clear that I didn't want to get into consulting or finance kind of a thing because I wanted to be a CXO, right? So I had worked with consulting for three years, but a consulting makes a partner. A, a leadership program or a gen man career makes you a CEO. I wanted to be a CEO. So what does a CEO do? Take decisions. Take the right decisions, take timely decisions. And I think my decision-making capability was extremely honed by the different opportunities and challenges that ABG has thrown at me. So I think these things are pretty much working with all kinds of diverse people of age groups, backgrounds, people knowing more than you, and decision making. I think these are the two or three things that definitely make the difference. Uh, what about your other batchmates, ABG LP batchmates, the guys who joined with you in the program? What are some of the interesting roles that they are doing that you are like, man, I, would, I wish I, I, I could get that role now? So there are uh, a lot of roles within ABG that are tremendously interesting. So there is a lot of work that is happening in the innovation cell, for example, which is about incubating a lot of new ideas like startups, etc. And I, I wish I could have had that role, but typically you want to spend about one, one and a half year in your role to learn enough and contribute back to the business. And you have to be in the right place at the right time. I was in some great places, definitely, which is why I am here today. I think. No one else has switched three businesses and five roles in my batch in six years. But if I had to, if I had to pick, that would probably be the one place I think I want to go next. Someone is joining from campus. Why is that program called a leadership program? I mean, any leader takes time, right? Like you're supposed to work through the uh, hierarchy, first learn how to run things yourself, and then become a leader. So why is the other Billa group leadership program called a leadership program? OK. So I didn't name it, but this is my take on it. OK? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I want to know how you look at it. So uh, I think the ABGLP program, and typically when I was hired, it was uh, meant for laterals, which uh, meant you at least had two to three years of work. Eh? So you have found your feet in what a corporate setup looks like. 
Okay, you're not right out of college. Though that's changed, you can see Abhishek right there. And he's a good example of us changing that decision. But uh, it's about grooming leaders right from the start. It's about creating leaders. It's about making terrific managers, giving you that extra responsibility. So typically all our roles that are assigned to us right from the stint is something that at least two or three people who are non-ABGLPs in the same business would be doing it. Right? So there's a lot of pressure on you to perform. And it's not like anyone is going to ask you to, um, or no, you will not have your growth if you don't um, perform well. But it's up to you to do well, right? I mean, if you don't do well, why would the company invest in you? That's a very easy question for all of you to answer. So uh, the leadership program actually aims at taking in people who have the potential to be good leaders. And, and hence, there's a two-day rigorous um, hiring program from the campus. And it's not like one GD, one interview, and done during the finals, of course. And uh, then throughout your stints, giving you all kinds of exposures of different businesses, functions, different kinds of even people. Right? So I worked in a Birla Carbon business where the average age of people was 45, where I worked in a retail business where the average age of people was 21. So that gives you a lot of learning as a leader. And hence, you keep getting on these roles, taking on the next big thing, which probably your manager should actually be doing, but giving it to you. So this program is actually designed for people who have that passion and that drive to go out and take on new challenges and keep performing better. Six years into your career, do you have a specialization? A lot of these people come and ask me questions about HR and marketing and the, uh, operations specialization, and I want to make a career in this particular thing. Uh, do you have a specialization six years into your job as well? OK, this is a little funny, OK? Like, when I went to campus, I wanted to be a marketer. I wanted to work with the J&Js and the Unilevers and PNGs and being a marketer. As soon as I went, my seniors told me, all these dreams you can just give up on. You are a girl with three years of work ex, three shadi on wali hai, ek bhi company te ko shortlist bhi nahi degi. Summers went, that was true. I didn't get a single shortlist from anyone because they're like, sales role kaise karegi, shadi kar legi, where we'll send her to some, you know, rural, rural Maharashtra to do sales of some shampoo or soap or whatever. So all those dreams were shattered right there. And then I knew I didn't, didn't, didn't want to do finance. Like, I don't really do well at it. Uh, <laughs> so effectively, what else did it mean? Like, I needed to figure my way out. I knew I was good at a few things, but I didn't know what I wanted to become an expert in. So Genman was like a clear choice. In fact, I'd interned with Google in marketing. I had a PPI, but I didn't take it. Then I had an offer from Amazon. I rejected that to join ABG. Purely because I think the world of opportunities that ABG gives, they stand up for that. If I had gone to Amazon, it, would, it was a bold program, which is the operations leadership. So I would have been confined to operations. I don't even know if I like it. So I didn't want to take a bet on something I didn't know. I knew here I would be able to experiment, find my feet, and then grow. And that's, that's why I took Genman. And I think most people who get into Genman get in like that. When you look at your batchmates, uh, what is the importance of a generalist in today's uh, employment market? How are generalists looked at? So are you a generalist, firstly? Would I would like to call generalist? myself a generalist. OK. And how are generalists looked at it, uh, in today's employment market? So I think generalists have a lot to add in today's employment market in terms of being able to shoulder all kinds of challenges and responsibilities that are thrown at them, right? So uh, typically, obviously, there is, and there is space for both kinds of people in the organization. None is better than the other. There are some things that have to be done by a specialized finance, marketing, or operations, supply chain kind of a person. But there are enough and more opportunities where there, it's more about being a generalist purely because of uh, the skills required to do that job are not specific to a functional subject, but more about how quick can you think, how strategic can you think, how quickly can you align stakeholders, how quickly can you take decisions, and how accurate can they be. Right? So for that, you need a generalist profile. I mean, be it even a startup, a any startup has like a growth relationship manager, an agency partner manager, an engagement manager, a business development head, an operations head. All these roles are open to generalists, all of them. And a lot of people from my batch or you know, like later batches or previous batches have moved on to startups to all kinds of such roles because there's a lot of value in being a generalist. Okay, uh, last question before I let you go. Uh, 
uh, I want to ask you, uh, how is ABG as a company uh, to female employees? Like what are some of the policies in place? What are your uh, f female colleagues uh, usually telling you about the organization? Okay, this is like some HR interview question. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, ABG first of all is not a company, it's a group and all its companies have very different policies. When it comes to women, and not just women, I talk about all kinds of diversities, it need not be only women. ABG has a very supportive culture towards women in terms of uh, uh, obviously supporting you through all your life cycle changes, which women obviously have more than men. One is that. Secondly, in spite of all that, there will never be a position where you will not be hired for a role because you are a woman, although you are better at it. Purely because, okay, she is at that stage where she will not have mobility or she is at a stage where she might not want to relocate or maybe it's been like five, six years and, you know, there is a plan of having a family and that, hence she might go off on six months of maternity leave. So, you will be... Um, surprised but in every kind of this decision making and I have made such decisions as a manager as well that if I have a girl and a guy or a woman and a, a male employee with a CV and the woman's CV stands up better it doesn't matter if the CV is better if she's better suited for the role she's hired so and and this is again like I said it's not specific to women it's for all kinds of diversity so ABG as a group embraces diversity and hence you actually have access to all this world of opportunities that we talk about and it's not just there on the presentation and with you know this asterisk saying conditions apply it's not like that. Mm -hmm.